Hey, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com. I want to go over a, a couple of cool features down on this bottom section where the transport control is along the bottom. Real quickly, you can quickly see how your system's performing. Uh, if anything's going wonky over here, you can double click on that or just click on it, I think, once. And you get this window that gives you all your performance stuff. So if things are acting wonky, that's where to look to see if something's going wrong. You can see sample rate, latency, how much time you have left on your hard drive. Uh, and here you can show, switch which kind of things you want to see. So if you like to, I tend to look at things in, in terms of bars and mostly in seconds. So you can change these so the bigger one is bars and the smaller one is seconds, however you like to look at it. Here's typical transport controls. I never click these. I use keyboard shortcuts for that. Um, but if you're a clicking kind of person, you can do that here. Also, you can see what stuff already has sh shortcuts for it. So simple things like, uh, number pad zero is stop, also space bar. I don't know why that's not showing up. Um, you can record enable by hitting the, the, the asterisk on your number pad, things like that. Uh, these are all typical controls. Here's a cool one right here. Go to previous marker and go to next marker. So if you want to go from one chorus to the next verse quickly, uh, you can use these buttons or the shortcuts, which are shift B and shift N, which is cool. Uh, over here, this is where our loop, the size of our loop, it starts here and ends here. And this allows us to quickly click on that, and it'll take our transport to the start or end of the loop by clicking those. That's also done by pressing 1 and 2 on the keyboard, which is great. Now over here, the, everything I've shown you so far, I don't really use all that much. This is the section where I hang out if I have to do something on a particular song. So what, what do we have here? Well, first we have, uh, this is our output meter, so we can see things quickly. Here's the mono button. This allows us to listen to the mix in mono at any point. Here you go. No plug-in required, it's right there all the time, ready for us to switch things into mono. Very, very cool button. Um, over here, we can set the tempo. We can click in, type it in, or we can tap on this, tap, 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 tap by clicking, and you'll see it changes the tempo to match. So no, no need to go anywhere else to tap in the tempo, it's all right there. Time signature can be changed right here. Metronome stuff. I use this all the time. Click here to turn the metronome on and off. Pressing C does the same thing. You can do all your metronome settings, such as do you want it to, to play, to click during play or not? Do you want an accented click? Do you want to actually render the click track to an audio file? Which is a fairly new feature. Very cool. If you need to have that as an audio file for exporting to other systems, all that fun stuff. Uh, let's see, what else? <clears throat> uh, here is to turn on, uh, what is that? Pre-count. And over here is pre-roll. Not entirely sure what the difference is. I think pre-count just doesn't start recording. It gives you four clicks or eight clicks before you actually start recording. Pre-roll just starts recording however many bars you set before the where you are in the song. So if I have it right at the downbeat of the chorus, this starts me recording a little bit before that. And then here's my favorite button down here. This is auto punch. This is similar to quick punch in Pro Tools. Pressing I will turn that on and off. Um, auto punch allows me to punch in a section without having to do it manually by pressing the record button and then pressing it again to punch out. So let's say uh, on this, uh, this vocal track, we wanted to punch in this phrase right here. It was a great performance, we just need to punch that in. Well, normally you'd have to press the record button. You're, hit, you're over here, you got it record enabled. You have to press the record button when you get to the spot where you want to punch in. So record, and then when they're done punching, then you press record again, right? And that's fine, but what if you're recording yourself or you don't want to bother having to press record in the right spots? Well, you can set your loop points wherever you want them, and with auto punch enabled, all you have to do is press record somewhere way back here and it'll automatically punch it in. So I press record, which is the asterisk on the keyboard. And you'll notice it's not recording. It's not recording. Now it's recording. And now it's not recording. Very cool feature, especially if you're recording yourself and are trying to punch things in and don't want to do the dance where you're running back and forth between the keyboard and the microphone. Very cool stuff. So that's it for the transport control area down at the bottom of the screen. More to come in future videos. Thanks for watching.